Well, welcome to Italy. This week we are exploring the fashion capital of Europe. We're here in Milan, but of course there's more to do in Milan than just go shopping. So we're going to be showing you 20 attractions around town. We had three days in Milan, so we hit the ground running and tried to see and do as much as possible. We made time for major attractions like Il Duomo, Sforza Castle, and Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II. But we also veered away from the crowds in search of street art and interesting neighborhoods. This being Italy, we also tried to prioritize meals, sampling everything from pizza to risotto and cappuccinos to aperitivos. The following travel guide will highlight 20 things to do when you visit Milan, Italy. Our first stop was Il Duomo, which is the most recognized attraction in the city. The cathedral took nearly six centuries to complete and the exterior is covered in Candoglia marble, which gives it its off-white pinkish color. So I'm pretty excited because we are standing right behind Il Duomo and we have tickets to go up to the rooftop to the terrace where you get some pretty cool views of the old town. So let's go in. Climbing up to the cathedral's rooftop was one of the coolest things we did in Milan. We got some great views of the city and it was also really nice getting a closer look at the architecture. So fun little fact we just learned, if you donate enough money, you can get one of those church spires all to yourself. Sure, what an Italian breakfast looks like. So we did a bit of research and asked around, and apparently it's just a coffee and anything sweet. So that could be pastries, bread with jam, cake or cookies. So we've sat down at a little cafe and we're gonna have our first Italian breakfast. My beverage of choice today is the cappuccino because it's a very cold day, and why not have some frothy coffee? Cold day. Is when is 15 degrees considered Look cold? Look at the way I'm dressed. I'm cold. Okay. Ooh, that's nice. Excellent cappuccino. Nice and rich and frothy. Mmm. Indeed. Can try some? And this pastry here I've selected, I honestly don't really know what it is. What made me select it was I saw walnut bits and hey, I'm a huge fan of walnuts, so I don't know what's inside. It looks like it might be apple. Let's find Ooh. out. I thought it was going to be prunes. Oh, no, 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 that's like, that's like pecan pie. That's oh. pecan filling inside. Let's see the inside. Can oh, you get a wow, that is so delicious. Oh, it's like having pecan pie. Pie for breakfast, he's a happy boy. Something that surprised us about Milan is that there is a castle right in the middle of the city. Sforza Castle was built in the 15th century by the Duke of Milan and it then underwent several restorations and expansions in the following centuries. Today it houses several of the city's most prized art possessions including frescoes by Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo's very last sculpture. For some upscale designer shopping, Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II is the place to be. It is considered one of the world's oldest and most beautiful shopping malls and its most impressive feature is an arching glass and cast iron roof. Well, good evening from Milan. It is our first full day here and it is now dinner time. So we just found a local little restaurant and we're going to be trying a traditional dish that is very popular in the city and in the Lombardy region. We're gonna have risotto alla milanese. Risotto alla Milanese has arrived and in case you're not too familiar with risotto it's basically a type of rice that is very thick, very starchy and it absorbs a lot of liquids so this should be good. It almost looks a little bit soupy and creamy and also my risotto alla Milanese gets its color from saffron so saffron is a bit of a reddish orange color when it's dry but when you stick it and mix it with the rice it turns it yellow so enough about that. Let's Surprise! Mm. You like oh, that? Wow. That is so good. 
and it's already cheesy. I mean, I know I added a lot of cheese, but I think they had already melted some cheese and mixed it in. So yeah, very cheesy and very buttery. You can never get too much cheese. Mm, that was so good. You're gonna like this. Milan has a lot of really cool street art and you'll often stumble upon it when you're not even looking. We spotted some really cool pieces around Porta Ticinese. Colonne di San Lorenzo are the remains of Roman ruins that date back to the 2nd century. They are believed to have been part of a bathhouse before they were moved to their current location at some point during the 4th century. Another fun activity to try in Milan is a boat tour of the canals. The city's canals are attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, who in 1482 was called over by the Duke of Milan to help renovate the city's canal system. So cruise on down knowing that da Vinci once strolled the same neighborhood you were visiting. Milan's Navigli district is one of the liveliest parts of town, especially when the sun goes down. We recommend finding a little restaurant along the water's edge and enjoying a proper Italian meal al fresco. So we've gone out for our first Italian aperitivo, which is kind of like a pre-dinner drinking tradition. Basically, get yourself a cocktail for about 10 euros, and that gives you access to this massive buffet of like pizzas, pastas, olives, anything you could possibly imagine. And this is what comes before dinner. So I have to admit, I was expecting very simple food for the aperitivo. I thought maybe they would just give us some prosciutto, cheese and olives, you know, pretty cheap, simple food. But instead, what we found was this. So I've got lasagna, I've got ravioli, I have stir-fried veggies, and even french fries, which are not Italian, but I had to grab a few anyway since they were available. Because Milan is one of the fashion capitals of the world, you couldn't come to the city and not go shopping. Right now we are walking along Via Torino, which boasts lots of different boutiques, but there are several different areas around the city that you could check out. show you some of the distinct neighborhoods in the city. This is Chinatown and we've noticed tons of Chinese restaurants and I think you can pick up some really good food here. Another thing we noticed about Milan is that locals bike everywhere. So if you want to do as locals do, consider hiring a bike for the day to help you get familiarized with the city. time here in Milan and we figured why not have pizza when in Italy I've only had pizza once the whole time I've been here and it was time to try a few others so we've been walking around the city and we walked by this one shop and we saw they had like these extra thick slices of pizza it almost looked like a focaccia bread with toppings so we went in there and grabbed two slices Okay, so tell us, what did you get for yourself? So I got the one that had salami and mozzarella, and this reminds me a lot of the pizza I had in Buenos Aires in Argentina. These massive thick slices that you would just go into a shop and order, and I think this is going to be delicious. Ooh, time for the first bite! And I like that it's already been pre-sliced into small little pieces for us. Perfect That's really for good. lunch at the park. Tasty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, gooey cheese. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't even have anything to say. <laughs> and what did you get on yours? Okay, so mine has what I believe is mozzarella and some small tomatoes and basil leaves, so it looks really good. And I was asking the guy who served our pizza, you know, like what kind of pizza is it? What style is it? 
and he called it pizza al trancio and I looked that up and it basically means pizza by the piece or pizza by the slice and as you can see it's already been pre-sliced into little portions so it's perfect for you know just getting it to go having lunch at a park or eating it outdoors yeah we're having it at a in a park now as it just yeah, starts to rain <laughs> so time to try this looks wonderful Oh my goodness. Oh. Is that mm. good? Oh yeah. So the dough, I mean, it's, it's really thick, but it also has a bit of a fluffy quality to it. And that is like a thick layer of cheese as well. Like, that's a generous amount of cheese. Check this out. Look at all that cheese. Kind of reminds me of Chicago deep dish style as well. Hmm. We also visited the Basilica of Sant Ustorgio, which is believed to have once held the relics of the Three Magi. If you didn't get enough of the Duomo and the rooftop terrace, you can also visit the Duomo Museum, which covers the cathedral's history and art a little more in depth. Like most European cities, Milan is steeped in history, but that doesn't mean there aren't newer parts with modern architecture. We made some time to take a hop-on, hop-off bus tour of the city, and that helped us see a different side of Milan. We also dropped by the Museum of Natural History, which is probably geared more towards children, but we were still curious to see their dinosaur displays. Lastly, on our final night in Milan, we went out for one last stroll around the city to enjoy some nighttime views. Swing by Il Duomo if you get a chance. It feels completely different when the lights come on and the crowds disperse. And that's all for our visit to Milan. We hope this video will give you some cool ideas of sites and attractions to check out around town, and if you have any other suggestions for travelers, feel free to add those in the comments below. Welcome to the extended portion of this Milan travel video, where we feature a series of full-length food vlogs including eating risotto, having Italian breakfast, going out for aperitivo, and devouring pizza by the slice. Well, a good evening from Milan. It is our first full day here and it is now dinner time. So we just found a local little restaurant and we're going to be trying a traditional dish that is very popular in the city and in the Lombardy region. We're gonna have risotto alla milanese. from Milan so far. Oh, it's been great, especially the food. And every time we go to a restaurant, I'm looking at the menu and I'm like, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. So I have a hard time deciding and I'm not even sure if we're gonna get to cover everything before we leave. Well, tonight it's risotto. First impressions of Italian food here in Milan. It's been really good. This bread I'm having right now is really good actually. I'm already on my fourth slice. I'm a little worried because I may start to get full before the risotto actually arrives. The risotto alla milanese has arrived and in case you're not too familiar with risotto, it's basically a type of rice that is very thick, very starchy and it absorbs a lot of liquids. So this should be good, it almost looks a little bit soupy and creamy. And also, my risotto alla milanese gets its color from saffron. So saffron is a bit of a reddish-orange color when it's dry, but when you stick it and mix it with the rice, it turns it yellow. So, enough about that. Let's Surprise! Mm. You like oh, that? Wow. That is so good. And it's already cheesy. I mean, I know I added a lot of cheese, but I think they had already melted some cheese and mixed it in. So yeah, very cheesy and very buttery. You can never get too much cheese. Mm, that is so good. You're gonna like this. Is it heaven? Seriously, that's amazing. Like, risotto might be my new favorite Italian food. <laughs> mm, it's <laughs> that so good. good. It is that good. And the thing I like about this one is that 
it's really plain. Like, I've had other types of risotto and there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of different ingredients, but this is just really simple. You've got your cheese, you've got your saffron. Yum. Now it's 6.20 in the evening and we've basically got the restaurant to ourselves. And that's because locals would never go out to eat this early. This is not even close to dinner time. Thinking more like 8, 9, 10, maybe even 11. That's what time dinner is. Aaron, we can see all the empty chairs right behind you. Judging by your plate, I'm assuming you enjoyed it. That's an empty plate, it's a happy boy. And the price was also very reasonable, coming in at seven euros. Great value, excellent meal. Well, good morning from Milano, Italia. We are here in Italy, it is our first day, so we have gone in search of the Italian breakfast. Now, we weren't entirely sure what an Italian breakfast looks like, so we did a bit of research and asked around, and apparently it's just a coffee and anything sweet. So that could be pastries, bread with jam, cake or cookies. So we've sat down at a little cafe, and we're gonna have our first Italian breakfast. of choice today is the cappuccino because it's a very cold day and why not have some frothy coffee? Cold day? It's fi when is 15 degrees considered Look cold? Look at the way I'm dressed. I'm cold, okay? Ooh, that's nice. Excellent cappuccino. Nice and rich and frothy. Mmm. Indeed. Can I try some? <laughs> So this breakfast reminds me a bit of breakfast in France and also in Argentina. A sweet way to start the day. And I have to say it's quite a huge contrast and change from what we were used to in England and Ireland where we were having full savory breakfasts. With eggs and sausages yeah. and mushrooms. This is lower calories and a lot sweeter. And this pastry here I've selected, I honestly don't really know what it is. What made me select it was I saw walnut bits and hey, I'm a huge fan of walnuts. So I don't know what's inside. It looks like it might be apple. Let's find Ooh. out. I thought it was going to be prunes. Oh, no, 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 that's like, that's like pecan pie. That's oh. pecan filling inside. Let's see the inside. Can oh, get a wow, bit? that is so delicious. <laughs> oh, it's like having pecan pie. Pie for breakfast, he's a happy boy. And what do you have over there? Well, this is the pastry I chose. It's a little twisty one with chocolate chips. real good it's very buttery and flaky and you just can't go wrong with chocolate chips this early in the morning I'm a fan so we're gonna be here for a week in the Lombardy region and I can't wait to try as much Italian food as possible as one of my favorite cuisines Last but not least, price point. Well, this delicious breakfast for two came to five euros and that included two cappuccinos and two pastries. So, not an expensive way to start the day. Yeah, talk about value. Mm -hmm. Italian aperitivo, which is kind of like a pre-dinner drinking tradition. Basically, get yourself a cocktail for about 10 euros, and that gives you access to this massive buffet of like pizzas, pastas, olives, anything you could possibly imagine. And this is what comes before dinner. expecting very simple food for the aperitivo. I thought maybe they would just give us some prosciutto, cheese and olives, you know, pretty cheap simple food. But instead, what we found was this. So I've got lasagna, I've got ravioli, I have stir-fried veggies, and even french fries, which are not Italian, but I had to grab a few anyway since they were available. So how about you? What did you get for the aperitivo? Give well, us a tour. Basically
basically I got almost exactly the same as you. The main difference being I got a huge slice of pizza and I think I got some more cold cuts and cheese. You know what? All the pizza was gone when I went up there. I think you took the last slice. No, what can I say? Alright, so I'm having a bellini which is made with peach juice and something else but I can't tell you what that something else is because I just don't know my cocktails very well. <laughs> That's good stuff right there. Sweet. Mm. And it appears you've gone for something a bit more tropical. Yeah, how can you go wrong with the classic pina colada? Now this looks really thick. I'm hoping that they put a lot of coconut and not too much pineapple juice. It's a pretty decent blend. Yeah, I can really taste the coconut. I like it. So, the savory part is over. What have we got now? Well, it was time for dessert, so I went back for seconds, and they had lots of different cakes. And then, this is really good. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it tastes a bit like a vanilla pudding cross custard. I don't know my Italian desserts, but I can tell you it's really good. So I'm not going to share. Okay, so final thoughts on your first aperitivo experience. How was it? Well, considering we spent several nights in Milan, I can't believe it took us to our final night to actually go and try it. We should have been doing this every night. It's fantastic. You get a really nice cocktail. You get a nice spread of food and dessert too for 10 euros. It's fantastic value. And what did you think of it? Honestly, for me, that was enough for dinner. It was a lot of food. I mean, it's an open buffet, so technically you can go up as many times as you want, but you don't want to be overdoing it, kind of like Vegas buffet style, where you're just like slapping, you know, the food on your plate until yeah. you've got a big mountain. That's not how it works over here. But it was really good, really tasty food. I would also recommend coming early. A Tivo is usually between 6 and 10 p.m. We showed up at like 6.30 and it was already quite packed, so come early, get a table, and there will be more food options as well. lunchtime here in Milan and we figured why not have pizza when in Italy I've only had pizza once the whole time I've been here and it was time to try a few others so we've been walking around the city and we walked by this one shop and we saw they had like these extra thick slices of pizza it almost looked like a focaccia bread with toppings so we went in there and grabbed two slices What did you get for yourself? So I got the one that had salami and mozzarella and this reminds me a lot of the pizza I had in Buenos Aires in Argentina. These massive thick slices that you would just go into a shop and order and I think this is going to be delicious. Ooh, time for the first bite! And I like that it's already been pre-sliced into small little pieces for us. Perfect That's really for good. lunch at the park. Tasty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, gooey cheese. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't even have anything to say. <laughs> Did you get on yours? Okay, so mine has what I believe is mozzarella and some small tomatoes and basil leaves, so it looks really good. And I was asking the guy who served our pizza, you know, like what kind of pizza is it? What style is it? And he called it pizza al trancio and I looked that up and it basically means pizza by the piece or pizza by the slice and as you can see it's already been pre-sliced into little portions so it's perfect for you know just getting it to go having lunch at a park or eating it outdoors yeah we're having it at a in a park now as it just yeah. starts to rain <laughs> so time to try this looks wonderful Oh my goodness. Oh. Is that mm. good? Oh yeah. So the dough, I mean, it's, it's really thick, but it also has a bit of a fluffy quality to it. And that is like a thick layer of cheese as well. Like, that's a generous amount of cheese. Check this out. Look at all that cheese. Kind of reminds me of Chicago deep dish style as well. Hmm. 
So the only other slice of pizza we've had in Milan so far was the super, super thin slice of pizza. How does this over here compare? Well, you can never go wrong with pizza as far as I'm concerned. But if I had to choose one of the two, I would go with the thicker pizza. I just love the thick dough and the generous amount of cheese. That is just unbelievable. And you're getting more bang for your bucks. It's more food, technically. Yeah, that's true. And how much did those two slices of pizza cost? Okay, so that was seven euros total for the two slices, so about 350 each. Not bad for such a giant slice of pizza, I'd say.